Welcome to another Synology Partner Online Training. Today we're going to be talking about installing, migrating, and managing a new deployment with our operating system, Disk Station Manager 7, also known as DSM 7. I'm Dave Russ, a Senior Technical Account Manager here at Synology, located in our Bellevue office. Now this presentation is going to cover a bunch of different topics, so this will be useful for both new and existing administrators of Synology systems. As I mentioned, we're going to focus on DSM-7 today, with our key topics being installation and migration, configuration and maintenance, and backup and restoration. All right, let's go ahead and kick things off with installation and migration. Now, the first thing we need to do after getting a new Synology device would be to install the operating system. We'll first go over how you can access your new device, then we'll talk about installing DSM, and lastly, we'll talk about migrating from an old system for those of you that are replacing or upgrading an existing device. Now, there are three main ways that you'll be able to first access your device after getting it plugged in. Our devices are entirely accessed over the network so that you can easily set up and manage your device from another device on that same network. Logging into a browser and going to find.synology.com is an easy to access tool to search your network for Synology devices. Another option is to download Synology Assistant from our website. Synology Assistant is another tool that will search your network for Synology devices, which you can then connect to. Finally, if you already know your Synology device's IP address, you can simply open your browser and navigate to the device manually. Once we've installed DSM, we need to start thinking about how we're going to configure our device. When choosing drives, you should always check out the compatibility list on our website to make sure that your purchasing drives are verified to work in the model that you've chosen. Synology drives are a fantastic choice, especially for our business class devices, because the firmware is specifically tailored to improve the reliability and the performance of Synology drives within our systems. We also want to think about whether an SSD cache might be a good fit. For VM storage or as a file server, an SSD cache might be a great option. But for sequential operations like backup and surveillance, typically an SSD cache won't be as effective and you can wear out the SSDs much more quickly. Some of our models have M.2 SSD slots built directly into them, so you don't even need to use any drive bays for your SSD cache. We also have to consider the RAID configuration that we want to set up for our drives in order to maximize usable storage while also providing enough redundancy. We support RAIDs 1, 5, 6, and 10, and another option is Synology Hybrid RAID, or SHR. Now, we don't recommend the use of SHR for business deployments, because while SHR can allow for more flexible usage of differently sized drives, the performance will not be as consistent as it would be when using RAID. We also need to consider the file system. In our case, we almost universally recommend using BTRFS to get the most out of your Synology device. We do also offer EXT4 for specific cases that might need or benefit from that file system. Here's what Synology Assistant looks like. We can simply click Search, and the software will scan our network looking for Synology devices. Once we find the device that we want to set up, we can highlight it and click Connect, which will open up a web browser for us to get started. Okay, so now that we're connected to the NAS device, we'll be greeted by a setup wizard. This will help guide us through the process of installing and setting up DSM. We have the choice of either automatically downloading the most current version of DSM, or downloading a specific version of DSM from Synology's website. The next step we should take is to create an administrator account which does not use the username admin. This is just a basic security step to protect against malicious actors who might try to access your device using the default administrator user account. In fact, to be safe, you should completely disable the default admin username. Now I'll show you what you'll see after getting connected to the Synology device. Here we are on the setup page for our Synology device that we just connected to. I'll move forward by clicking Install. Next, I recommend choosing the option to automatically download the latest version of DSM. Since I'm using drives that were in a different device previously, I get a warning that the data on my drives will be deleted. I'll check the box indicating that I understand, and then I'll go ahead and click Continue. 
Now at this point, DSM will be downloaded from our website and installed onto our device, and then the device will restart. After the device restarts, some built-in packages will be automatically installed. Once that's done, I can click Start, provide a device name, username, and then I can choose a password. We recommend automatically installing important DSM updates, but you can choose to automatically install all updates or just be notified of available updates. We'll click Next to continue, and in the next window, we're prompted to create a Synology account, which we highly recommend in order to gain access to things like Synology Secure Sign-In, Active Insight Monitoring, and a bunch of other services. Finally, we're prompted to share anonymous data to help Synology improve our services. Once we hit Submit, we load straight into DSM-7. From here, we can create a storage pool and a volume and get into more of our software. Now, not all of you will be setting up a device for first-time use. Let's talk about some different ways that you can migrate data from a device that you already own. We'll discuss hard drive migration, using our Migration Assistant tool, and migrating using our Hyper Backup software. First up is hard drive migration. To be more direct, I mean taking the drives out of your existing device and then placing them into a new one. This is really often the fastest and simplest way to migrate your data. A couple of examples of when you might use this method are if you're replacing a device that was accidentally damaged, or if you purchase a new Synology device to upgrade your existing one. Before moving forward with using this method, we would want to make sure that the drives are compatible with both NAS devices and that the replacement NAS supports this type of migration. Now, when you're migrating to a device that is identical to the model that you've pulled the drives out of, you won't need to do anything else. The system will just boot up normally. If you migrate to a different model, a prompt will appear when connecting to the device, which asks you to confirm that you want to migrate to this new device. It's important to note this series of your device when considering migrating. As you can see, you can migrate drives from any device in a series to the same series, but there are some restrictions on migration between series. For instance, you can migrate drives from Plus Series devices to XS and XS Plus Series devices without any issues, but you wouldn't be able to migrate those same drives to one of our FS Series devices. Here's what the screen will look like when you migrate drives to a new device. You'll get the option to either retain your system configurations or to reset them and keep your files only. And hard drive migration is really just as simple as that. The second migration technique we'll talk about is using our Migration Assistant. Now we want to use this method when we have two working devices and we need our new device to be set up identically to the existing one. For instance, imagine you owned an old Synology device and you purchased a new one. You could use Migration Assistant to transfer your data and settings over, and then you could repurpose your older device as a backup target, for instance. Now we should only use this method when all of the following are true. Both devices need to be compatible for migration, both devices need to currently be working, and the new device has to have at least the same amount of usable storage as our original device. Let me show you what it looks like to set up Migration Assistant. So we're logged into DSM-7 on our destination device. I've already installed the package from our package center, so I'll open up the main menu and I'll click on Migration Assistant. Once it loads, I'll click Next, and then I'll put in the IP address of the source device, my username, and my password. After connecting to that source device, I'm prompted to confirm that everything is correct, so I can just press Done. I get a quick warning that services will be temporarily stopped on the source device, and that all of my data and configurations will be deleted on the destination device. I'll press continue, type in my password, and then the migration will start. Once the migration is completed, I'll get a prompt to restart my device with the option to either keep services running on the source device or stop them so that they can transfer to the destination device after the restart. I'll just restart without stopping the services in this case. Once the device starts back up, I can put in my username and password for an admin account from the source server, and I'm greeted with a message asking me to make sure that I have everything configured correctly so that my services run without any issues. 
Hopefully this helped to show you how quickly and easily Migration Assistant will allow you to completely duplicate your existing Synology device. The last migration tool we'll be discussing is using our Hyper Backup software as a restoration tool. Now we will also talk about Hyper Backup later on in this presentation when we're getting into backup as well. Hyper Backup is uniquely able to allow us to restore to a new device with a different file system or RAID configuration than our original NAS. Hyper Backup is also our only migration option that allows us to restore from the cloud so that when we're restoring, you actually wouldn't need any of your old hardware as long as you've planned ahead and already backed up your data to the cloud. Let me go through a quick demo of how you can save your settings for your applications using Hyper Backup. Within DSM-7, I'll click on Hyper Backup. I'm going to choose to backup to our own cloud service called Synology C2 Storage. At this point, we would be prompted to log into our Synology account. But in my case, I'm already logged in, so I just see my C2 storage overview. After I click Next, I'm prompted to allow Hyper Backup to backup my data to my C2 storage. Once I click Allow, I'll go ahead and choose the directory within C2 storage that I want to back up to. Next, I'll skip over the data backup part. I can click the top left checkbox here to choose all of my applications or I can select individual applications that I want to back up. The summary column tells me exactly what information will be backed up for each individual package. Now, if we look at Surveillance Station, you'll see that we can edit the backup even further by choosing to back up the recordings and the package settings, or just the package settings. Now, as you can see, transfer encryption is automatically enabled, and we can set up a backup schedule on this page, as well as client-side encryption. Next, we can set up our rotation settings. I'll go ahead and click Done, and I'll get a prompt asking if I want to backup now, and I'll go ahead and select Yes to start that backup. Now that we've got our applications backed up, we need to restore them to the device that we're migrating to. On that new device, I've downloaded Hyper Backup, and I'll open that up now. Now, I don't want to create a new task, so I'll exit out of this, and instead, I'll click Restore. I'll select Restore from existing repositories and choose Synology C2 Storage. Once again, I'll allow access to C2 Storage. Now, I'll choose the directory where my backup is being stored. Afterwards, I'll choose whether I want to use system configurations from the original device. I get a warning that services will be stopped, and I'll click Yes to continue. Now, we didn't back up any data, so we can just skip through this part. And now we get to our applications. I'll choose to restore all of the application settings, and then click Next. Finally, I can review our choices, and then click Done, and the restoration process begins. One at a time, each section will show that the restoration has succeeded. Finally, we'll see a ready to relink status, meaning that we can continue on with our version history that started from our original source device. Hyper Backup really is the most flexible form of backup and restoration that we have available, allowing you to choose what data or applications that you want to back up, and allowing you to choose where you want to keep that backup. As you can tell, it's super easy to connect to a new Synology device, install our operating system, and migrate data from an existing solution. So now that you know all of the ways that you can migrate your data, let's go over a flowchart with a few examples to decide which tool would be the best to use in different situations. So first, let's imagine that your current NAS is out of commission. In this case, it's going to make the most sense to take the drives out of your old device and migrate them into the new one. OK, let's imagine that your current device is actually working fine. If you're going to purchase drives for your new device, then we'll need another way to transfer the data. If the amount of storage on your new device is not going to be twice as large as your existing solution, you'll want to use Migration Assistant. If you need a short system downtime, or you need to keep your data and packages entirely or almost entirely the same, you should also use Migration Assistant. Otherwise, if you want to use a different file system or RAID configuration on the new device, you should go with Hyper Backup. 
Of course, this isn't an exhaustive list of possibilities, but hopefully it gives you a good idea of what would be best for your scenario. Before migrating your device, it is a best practice to unmount any SSD caches that you are using in your system. Then, after the migration takes place, you can go ahead and remount those caches. All right, so once you've got all of that out of the way and our device is up and running, we can start thinking about configuration and maintenance. In this section, we're gonna talk about best practices in setup and security. We'll go over how to protect your hardware and we'll talk about how to manage an entire fleet of Synology devices in an efficient way. Let's jump right in and talk about four best practices that will improve your quality of life as an admin of one of our devices. So one of the first things I like to set up on a new device is Quick Connect. Quick Connect allows you to connect to your NAS via the internet without needing to manually set up port forwarding rules. Quick Connect also works with a lot of our software to allow easy remote sign-in. Next, I like to make sure that my notifications are set up exactly how I like them. We can set up email, SMS, or push notifications for a huge number of different events. From a drive failure, to a blocked IP address, to new DSM updates, you've got the ability to customize which notifications you receive in which format. When you install certain Synology packages, you'll also have the ability to add new notifications specific to the features within that software. When it comes to updating the operating system, you have several options available. You can choose to automatically install the latest version, only automatically install critical security updates, or you can choose to be notified when a new update comes out so that you can decide whether you want to update or not. My last recommendation is to review our security checklist to make sure that you're doing everything that you can to protect yourself against cyber attacks. I'll go ahead and jump back into DSM to show you where you'd find some of these options within the control panel. Back in DSM, I'll click on our control panel. I'll then select external access. I can then click enable quick connect. Now, if you're not signed into a Synology account already, you'll be prompted to sign in or to sign up for one. Once you do get signed in, you can choose a quick connect ID, which will allow you to quickly access your device even when outside of your network by navigating to your quick connect ID dot quick connect dot to. Next, we can select notification from the side panel. We can enable email, SMS, or push notifications, and then customize the events that we want to be notified about. Lastly, we can click on update and restore, and then click on update settings to choose whether we want automatic critical updates, all automatic updates, or if we want to be notified when there is an update. As I mentioned before, we have a security checklist on our website that includes a ton of valuable info. A few important parts of that checklist are disabling the default admin account, adding multi-factor authentication, changing your ports so that they aren't the default ports, adding an SSL certificate, setting up IP auto block to protect your device against brute force attacks, and a ton more. Please do visit our website to go over the full list to make sure that your NAS is as secure as possible. We have another spot video that goes into way more detail about security best practices, which I also highly recommend checking out. We've talked a bit about securing the software on your device, so let's talk about the ways that we can physically protect our data and our NAS devices. We can think about this in terms of reliable power to our devices, high availability setups, and extending our warranty. One of the main ways we can protect our hardware is through the use of an uninterruptible power supply, or a UPS. In the event that there is a power outage, we can gracefully shut down the device before the battery of the UPS is exhausted. We can also set up the device to automatically power back up after the power comes back on. To set up our UPS, we can just open up our control panel, click Hardware and Power, and then we can go to the UPS tab. From here, we can enable UPS support, choose our UPS type, and customize the amount of time before our device goes into standby mode. Standby mode will unmount your volumes and stop your services to ensure that none of your data is lost or corrupted. Another way that we can protect our data is by creating redundancy in our hardware to provide the best uptime possible. 
One way to achieve this is by using Synology High Availability, which allows us to set up two identically configured Synology devices to act as a single cluster. Once set up, you'll have an active server, which manages your data, and a passive server, which is standing by to take over in the event that the active server is unavailable and needs to fail over. Another option for hardware redundancy is to use a dual controller device. The SA3200D is one option which allows for high availability to exist in a single chassis. The UC3200 is another option which specifically uses iSCSI or fiber channel to provide a dual active environment for extremely fast failover. Synology devices come with a great warranty and free lifetime tech support on top of that. But for those of you who want a little bit of extra longevity on your coverage, we have an extended warranty program available for select devices with two and three year warranties. This service extends your warranty by two years, providing peace of mind for the long term. Currently, you'll need to extend your warranty within the first 90 days after you purchase an eligible device. Please do check out our website to confirm that your device is eligible. To add an extended warranty, you'll first need to log into your Synology account at Synology.com. Then you can navigate to Devices and then register for Extended Warranty Plus. You can click Start and then choose your location. Next, we'll see a screen that shows us all of our devices that are eligible to receive the extended warranty. In my case, I actually don't have any devices currently registered on my account that are eligible. So I'll go ahead and click Add Device, and then I'll paste in the serial number and click Add. Once I've confirmed that the device is checked, I'll click Next. Now I'm prompted to input my proof of purchase. We extremely highly recommend finding and entering your proof of purchase, as the extended warranty date will take effect from that date. Without your proof of purchase, the system will use the manufacture date for your device. Next, you'll be able to review your order, including the date that your extended warranty will expire. And then you can continue to the payment section. Now, for those of us that have multiple Synology devices, potentially spread throughout a bunch of different locations, we need tools to monitor and maintain multiple devices easily. Our central management system, or CMS, and our active insight tools are the best way to accomplish this. CMS is a tool within DSM that allows us to use a single host device that we can connect other Synology devices to. Once they're connected, we can monitor their status, drive, and volume health. We can push operating system or package updates, centrally review logs, and set group policies. If needed, we can directly drill down to a device from the CMS interface and manage servers individually. Let me walk you through an example scenario of how you could use CMS in your own environment. Within DSM, we'll go ahead and click on CMS. When CMS opens, we'll see the number of servers that we have connected, and then we can review the status of our systems and any warnings. I can click on this arrow within the volume section, and I'll be taken to the storage section to review that warning. Upon further inspection, we can see that one of our volumes is 98% full, so I can make a note of that to resolve it later. Within the Servers tab, we can review our devices, and we can connect directly to one of them by clicking Go to Server. In the Group tab, we can categorize our devices, and in the Policy tab, we can set specific rules for our devices to follow. For instance, I can create a new policy. I can call it Join Domain. I can choose Domain slash LDAP, and then type in my domain information. Once this policy is set up, I can apply it to all of my servers, or I can choose a specific group of servers that I want it to apply to. You can really customize how you want to set up these policies. For instance, you can set up firewall settings, DSM updates, notifications, and file services to be consistent across all of the Synology devices in your fleet. Now, on the other hand, Active Insight is a cloud-based tool which can monitor many Synology devices from afar. With Active Insight, you can get event notifications and alerts about unusual activity. You can also remotely manage software updates and delegate permissions to other Synology accounts. Lastly, you can automatically pull log data, browse event details, 
and get step-by-step -step procedures to help you resolve any issues that you might run into. Let's take a look at what this looks like. By navigating to insight.synology.com, we can access Active Insight. Within this environment, I can see an overview of all of my devices. I can also see events that have occurred in the past seven days. I can go into an event and either mute it for a specific period of time or mark it as resolved to remove it from my to-do list. We can also quickly see how many backups are abnormal or how many failures to update are present. We can click into the host section to see the load on each of our devices as well as the errors specific to each device. In the events section, we can review new events as well as resolved events. As you can see, this is where the event that I resolved earlier ended up. Within the protection tab, we can review failed or available updates for DSM. We can choose to push updates for individual devices or for many of them at the same time. We can also review package updates and we can curate the list of packages that we want to view within Active Insight. Our Hyper Backup tab allows us to see which shared folders and which applications from each device are being backed up. And from the Login Activity section, we can review unusual login activity at a glance. Now, reports are an awesome tool, which can allow you to see an overview of the activities of your devices over a specific period of time. You can select which information you want to be included, set a schedule for how often you want the report to be sent out, and you can choose which recipients you want the report to go to. You can also choose one of your reports, and then you can generate it on demand for a time window of your choosing. Within the Management tab, we can see who is logged into Active Insight, and we can end the session of any suspicious IP addresses or clients. Now, groups are a great way to organize your list of hosts, and you can really organize based on any metric that you'd like. For instance, if you're an MSP, you can group devices by client or by vertical. On the other hand, if you're an organization with multiple devices, you could organize by branch or department. From the host tab, we can review joined devices and remove them. We can also filter devices. For example, you can filter to show only specific models. Within the Account Delegation tab, you can add additional Synology accounts, which you'll be able to monitor and control. This is really a great tool for MSPs that need to manage multiple different clients or for multi-site organizations with semi-autonomous branch offices. Under Custom Events, we can set up event-based thresholds for specific metrics that we want to monitor. For instance, if the CPU load for a device is above a certain percentage, you can be alerted at that time. You can also set up a recommended solution for technicians to take in the event that they get this alert. Keep in mind that for predefined Active Insight events, the platform will provide recommended procedures for technicians to follow. Finally, you can apply these events to specific hosts so that you're only being notified when you need to be. Now, as you can tell, Active Insight is an incredibly feature-rich platform, which will enable you to stay on top of your entire fleet of devices from a single pane of glass. Once again, when we're setting up our device, we can improve our quality of life by adding Quick Connect, setting up notifications, and adding automatic DSM updates. We can also ensure that we're following best practices by following our security checklist. We can physically protect our devices using an uninterruptible power supply, and we can maximize our uptime using Synology High Availability or one of our dual controller devices. For select devices with two and three year warranties, we can add an extended hardware warranty on top of that. We can also monitor and manage multiple devices easily straight from DSM using Central Management System or from the cloud using Active Insight. While CMS has the ability to customize a little bit more and add some policies to NAS devices, Active Insight is likely the best choice for easy access or for managed service providers who are managing their customers' devices. Once we're all set up and configured, we need to think about keeping a backup of our data and then, of course, being able to restore it when needed. 
I want to make a quick note that we do have some other webinars that specifically focus on backup and restoration, and I'd highly recommend checking those out to get into more detail. In this presentation, we're going to focus on just the critical functionality that you'll need to know. The main forms of versioning and backup you'll be able to set up for your Synology device are snapshots using snapshot replication, basic data backups using hyperbackup, backups of the operating system configuration within control panel, and full system image backups using active backup for DSM. Now snapshots are a great tool to provide historical versions of what the data looked like on your device at different points in time. There is virtually no performance impact when taking these snapshots, and if you have a second Synology device, you can even replicate these snapshots as part of a disaster recovery plan. This is especially useful when considering a defense against ransomware attacks. If our data is encrypted by ransomware, we can restore to a previous snapshot before we were affected by the attack. Another fantastic part of taking these snapshots is the integration with Windows. Users can restore previous versions of their files and folders without any assistance needed from their IT team. I'll run through how easy it is to get this set up within our snapshot replication software. Back in DSM, we'll click on Snapshot Replication. In the Overview tab, we can review any warnings that we might have for some of our shared folders. Within the Snapshots tab, we can see all of our shared folders and their protection or replication status. To manually take a snapshot, we can click the Snapshot dropdown and then Take a Snapshot. We can also review a list of snapshot versions. I'll go ahead and browse the most current version, and we can see that this new folder is currently empty. But I do know that at some point we did have files in there. We'll talk about that in just a moment. For now, if we go into Settings, we can set up a snapshot schedule to occur up to every five minutes. And we can also set up a retention policy where we can get as specific as we want about how many hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly versions that we want to keep. If I click back into Settings and enable a snapshot schedule, you'll see that the folder status changes to Scheduled. Now in our Windows environment, let's revisit that new folder that I mentioned previously. I've mapped the shared folder to our environment, so we can click into the new folder. And as we saw before, the folder is empty. If we right-click and choose Restore Previous Versions, we can look through our different versions to find the one that included two image files. We can open this version of the folder to confirm the contents, and then we can click Restore to bring that data back. Now I do want to note that you can also restore this data directly from DSM. With Snapshot Replication, you are protecting your environment from both internal and external threats like ransomware. HyperBackup is a great multi-medium backup tool which will allow you to backup your data, application settings, and configuration data to a bunch of different targets, including cloud services, external hard drives, or of course another Synology device. Let me show you all of the different targets that we can backup to within HyperBackup. I'll go ahead and click on HyperBackup, and I'll create a new data backup task. And as you can see, we can back up to just about every major cloud provider. Now there might be some providers that you don't see on this list, but most of the major providers not listed are S3 compatible. So you could just choose the S3 storage option and use a custom URL to back up to those services. One great new tool in DSM-7 is the ability to back up the settings for your control panel to your Synology account. If something happens to your device, or if you want multiple Synology devices to have the same configuration, you can easily restore from your previous configuration. Taking a look within DSM, you can navigate to the control panel, and then to Update and Restore. After clicking the Configuration Backup tab, you'll see Automatic Backup, Manual Export, and Restore DSM configurations. Previously, only the Manual Export and Restore options were available, but with DSM-7, you have the ability to automatically back up your DSM configuration directly to your Synology account. You have the option to use auto-encryption or to set up self-defined encryption with a password. We do recommend self-defined encryption so you can be as secure as possible. After selecting that option, an encryption key will automatically be downloaded to your device. After clicking Restore, 
we can choose to restore from our Synology account or from a manually exported configuration file. If we choose our Synology account, we'll see a list of configuration files for each device that we're backing up this data for. We can choose our own device, type in our self-defined encryption password, or we can plug in the encryption key that was automatically downloaded. Finally, we're able to choose the specific settings and system configurations that we want to import. So, for instance, if we only wanted to restore users, groups, shared folders, and application privileges, we wouldn't need to roll back all of our other settings as well. Our active backup for business software is adding on a new function, complete backups for your entire NAS device. This new functionality includes bare metal backups, so you could back up a full image of your entire device and easily restore an exact copy of it as if nothing ever happened. Because this supports data deduplication, your backup will actually be even smaller than the space taken up on your device. Since we support incremental backups, after you complete your first backup, only the newly changed data will need to be backed up, saving you bandwidth and time. And because we support file, folder, and full device restoration, you'll be able to either navigate through the backup of your system and pick out individual files to restore, or restore the backup of your entire NAS device. Let me show you what this looks like in practice. I'll click into Active Backup for Business, and as you can see, I already have a backup task set up for another NAS device. If we wanted to create a new task, all we'd need to do is click Create Task. We can give our task a name, as well as enable data transfer compression and encryption. We can then choose the folder where we want the data to go. Keep in mind that if you want compression or encryption at your destination, you'll need to make sure that the shared folder that you're sending data to supports those features. Next, we'll choose our backup schedule, which we can set to be as frequent as once per hour. Afterwards, we'll set up our retention policy to our liking. Then, we can grant privileges to our local or domain users for this backup task. Now, normally, we'd click Done to create the backup task, but since I already have one set up that already has had a successful backup, we can move on to just show you how to restore a device. All right, so I've transitioned over to a device that we want to restore to. I've installed DSM as well as the Active Backup for Business agent. From this agent, we can click on Restore and choose System. To restore, I'll click Restore System, and then I'll click again to confirm that I'm okay with my data being deleted. I'll then type in the IP address of the device that is storing the backup configuration, as well as the username and password for that device. I'll choose the backup task that I want to restore, and then click Next. Then I'll choose the most recent version. Now you could also restore all of your network-related settings if you were re-imaging and replacing a device for the same location. Next, we can review our settings and click Restore, and then plug in our password. Our software takes over from there, restoring your entire system. As I mentioned, we've got a bunch of different tools for versioning and backing up your data. Snapshot allows us to set up historical versions of our data that we can jump back to if we need to. Hyperbackup allows us to back up our data in a bunch of different ways, including up to a cloud service. We can back up our configuration settings to our local device or to our Synology account. And we can back up our entire NAS device using Active Backup for Business. Once again, for more detailed descriptions of how you can best back up your data, I highly recommend checking out the Spot video that specifically goes into that topic. So we covered a lot today. I want to quickly recap some of what I mentioned, as well as get you pointed in the right direction to get your project started. We began by talking about installing and migrating data to a new device by using tools like Synology Assistant to access our device, and then tools like Migration Assistant and Hyper Backup to migrate data to that new device. Next, we went over configuration and maintenance, where we talked about using Quick Connect for easy access to our device, setting up notifications, setting up automatic updates for our operating system, and our security checklist. To protect our hardware and data, we talked about using an uninterruptible power supply, using two identical devices to set up a high availability cluster, or using a dual controller device, and we talked about adding an extended warranty onto eligible devices. For management of multiple devices, 
we can use one of our devices as a central management system host, or we can use Active Insight for monitoring our devices from the cloud. Lastly, we looked at backup and recovery tools like Snapshot Replication, which is one of the best tools for ransomware protection, Hyper Backup for backups compatible with a ton of different platforms, backups of our DSM configuration, which we can export or save to our Synology account, as well as full system image backups using Active Backup for Business. Now, once we've got all of this set up, we've got an extremely solid base for our deployment. Now that you've learned a bunch about how to get everything set up once you have a new device, I should probably tell you how to get one. On Synology.com, we have a where to buy page, which you can visit to find an authorized partner that we regularly work with and provide with training. I hope this presentation helped you learn more about best practices for getting a new device set up. If you have any additional questions, business users can reach out to onboarding at SynologyAmerica.com and channel partners can contact SAC underscore sales at Synology.com. Thank you for joining me and have a great rest of your day.